I've been to four FIFA Women's World Cups. I've been to three Olympic Games. I have a bronze medal from the 2012 London Olympics, which put me into the Canadian Olympic Hall of Fame. And most recently, I have a gold medal from Tokyo. But the moments that changed my life, they're not on that list. In 2007, I got my first chance to start for Canada in the Women's World Cup in China. Big deal, right? At the end of that tournament, my goalkeeper coach sat me down and he said, Aaron, one day you're going to be one of the best goalkeepers in the world. And I was like, oh, one of the best. I was pissed. I wasn't interested in being one of the best. I only wanted to be the best. And my definition of success at that point was to be flawless. I wasn't going to make one mistake. The best doesn't make any mistakes. I'm sure you can guess how that went. All the joy was quickly sucked out of the game for me. And I didn't realize how miserable I had become until I'm literally bawling my eyes out. 2008 Beijing Olympics, holding on to my, my knee because I had just torn my ACL. And I acted like the world was ending, that I was devastated. I was the kid that had the t-shirt that said soccer is life. And I wore that like seven days a week as an adult. Um, but in that moment, I was totally relieved. And then I had the most significant epiphany of my career. So I'm sitting down with my sports psychologist, Alex Hodgins, and we were talking about how I would constantly dwell on mistakes. And because of that, I was constantly thinking about the past, or I'd always worry about making mistakes in the future. So I was constantly thinking about the future. And as a result, I was very rarely in the present moment which I now know is the definition of performance anxiety because uh, my business partner has her doctorate in mindfulness research. She told me that. So, um, and since the fifth grade, like I said about Mademoiselle Costa, I've been in love with art, right? So Alex asked me, well then, how do you feel when you make a mistake in art? And I'm like, mistake in art? What are you talking about, man? You don't make mistakes in art. You like paint over it, you start again, you try a different technique, and sometimes the mistake is the most beautiful part of the piece. So he's like smiling ear to ear, and I'm like getting caught up. And then I'm like, oh my God, the way that we see mistakes is a choice. Now, we develop how we see mistakes as early as three and a half years old. So maybe choice isn't the right word. Maybe mental habit is. But are we aware of our mental habits? When do we become aware of our mental habits? When I gave a number of motivational talks, well, I thought they were, but uh, to 10 to 18 year olds recently, I asked each group, okay, are mistakes good or are they bad? And almost robotically, the kids said, they are good because you learn from them. <laughs> Obviously, someone's told them that, right? And I'm like, okay, well then, how do you talk to yourself after you made a mistake? And for most of them, it was if they had thought about it for the first time. And I said, well, I'm pretty brutal to myself. I'm mean and I'm unforgiving. Then I explained that the research actually proves that being hard on yourself slows down your learning. That self-compassion develops grit, a willingness to get up and try again. That being hard on yourself actually serves no purpose. Now, obviously being a perfectionist gets a lot of athletes and coaches extremely far, right? But is it possible to learn all of that and enjoy it a bit more? My biggest critic, being a perfectionist myself, has always been me. But what about being my own biggest fan? Up until this 